there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Won't you come right in? Grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever. Uh, you probably know I'm a tea drinker. Um, when I first got married many years ago, we were evangelists. There's not a lot of those around anymore, but we traveled from church to church. Sometimes my husband was a great preacher, and sometimes the revivals would last four, six, even one for eight weeks. And you know, everywhere you go, they offer you coffee. And you have no idea how try I tried and tried to like coffee. Could not do it, could not do it. I finally gave up and went back to my roots. That's a good cup of tea. Uh, my mom was born in England. Maybe that's got something to do with it. But for all you coffee drinkers out there, we love you. Just grab whatever you can. I hope you'll stay with us for this program. Got a very interesting uh, lady who's come back. Hold on, let me see if I can find this. Um, Linda Gilden, listen to this, an experienced writer, speaker, editor, writing coach, and certified personality trainer. She's done all of these things, and I want to know if she could train my personality. It probably needs some. I'm glad to have her back. She is a very talented lady. And uh, we are going to make cheesy hash brown potato soup. Now, this is a very rich, rich soup. And I think you could consider it an entree. I'll see if Stephanie agrees with that. Uh, but before I join Stephanie, let me talk to you a little bit about supporting the program. You know, some programs, 30 minutes, and they take 10 to 12 raising funds. And I don't think we spend 60 seconds raising funds. But let me talk to you who've watched a long time and, and maybe you've intended to send a gift, an offering. This is a good day to carry out that good intention. I, uh, I believe that the Lord prompts you. I'm, I'm a giver, and I've learned that when the Lord prompts me to give, just go ahead and do it, and don't angst over it. Uh, he's not going to ask you to give to something that's totally questionable and all that. If you saw, uh, I think, a program about a week ago, uh, Stephanie and I just laughed our heads off in that kitchen because she had received... Uh, email from someone who thought that she and I each made a six-figure salary. Not true, uh, nor does anybody else in this network, I can promise you that. So the Lord will really impress you to send and give to those that are worthy and handle it right. And I, I think we can stand before God on that one for sure. So if you give by credit card, debit card, that number's coming up on your screen. And also our address, Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will so, so appreciate it. We appreciate all the sweet notes you send us, the emails, the gifts, large or small. The important thing is the kingdom of God is if you obey him. It's not that much the size of the gift. And Jesus certainly pointed that out while he was here on earth. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. Wouldn't you love to make six figures? I would. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has been at it again. This girl, you know, she's so pretty and she looks so feminine, but she actually goes <laughs> hunting, <laughs> a lot of things like that. Uh, you went again? So, yes. So I had a rough week last week. You know, my dog died and it mm -hmm. was just a rough week. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I just need to get away because going to hunt camp, honestly, I'm there not even 48 hours, and I felt like I was gone for days and days and days. It's just like that, because no TV, you're just out doing fun things. And so it I clears needed, the cobwebs. Yes, so it? I just needed to get away, so I just took a, I took a picture to show, because yeah. it's just so much fun. So if we can see the picture. There she is, yeah. out there in the primitive it wilderness. It was so gorgeous out. In the morning when we went out, it was 47 degrees. It was a little chilly, but this was later in the afternoon, so it was a little warmer. We were a little higher up. And it was just nice to get away, and it, there's just beauty out there. And Does your husband appreciate you going? I oh, think yeah. I think there's a lot of wives that wouldn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because and that's the way I go, because he loves it, and I want to do something with him that he loves. And, you know, would I do it if without him? No. It's not <laughs> something I would choose to do, but I, I don't mind going. I like it, and I like doing something with him that he likes to do. Well... I think there's something too. Probably, did your phone work out there? Oh yeah, yeah. I can stay in touch, like with my daughter, and I mean that you know that's okay. But we don't watch TV. 
You know, we're just outside oh doing gosh, stuff that, the whole time. That sounds so Which is another great thing healthy. right now. Yes. Uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Yes. Getting out in nature is a spiritual thing. Yes, I think. for sure. So this suit made me think because they're all going back up right after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, and they all bring a ton of food and everything. And I'm thinking I might make a batch of the soup and send up because it looks so and it smells so mm -hmm. good. It'd be very hearty. Yeah, so all I have in here is I have four cups of um, chicken broth that I boiled and a bag of frozen hash browns. Yeah, it's super it easy. Good. You don't have to peel the potatoes. Right. You don't have to boil the potatoes. Just a, just hash browns. Mm -hmm. So let me turn this down a little bit. Okay. Because it's starting to bubble and I don't want it to get me. Okay, so I just have a can of the cream, um, chicken, cream, cream of chicken, chicken soup. Uh -huh. And I have some sour cream I'm going to put in here. And I have some cheddar cheese and um, onion powder. And by the time that all melts together, we're talking oh, it's gonna, rich. Yeah, it's going to be very flavorful. So and, that's sour cream. And uh, if you're freaking out, you can get all of if this stuff uh, <laughs> reduced fat or fat free. Yes. Yeah, this is just a good fall mm -hmm. when you're ready to bundle up and not wear a bathing soup soup. No. <laughs> yeah, I was out. I was out shopping this weekend and. Christmas is everywhere, and as we're making this program, yes, it's uh, the end of October. Yes, so they, okay, even I'll I'll say it. I'm I'm the lover of Christmas. You Me know too. that, but I, even I'm saying okay, let's not go crazy <laughs> and put it out a little too early. As much as I love it, and I don't mind going in the stores. That's dried and oregano. Seeing, dried oregano, salt and pepper. Okay, and people ask us to be sure and tell them half, that was a half a teaspoon, teaspoon of onion powder. How much sour cream? Half a cup of sour cream. Right there. No, that's cream cheese. Oh, we put the sour <laughs> cream in. Looks alike. Looks like the same thing. If your sour cream was really bad, that mm -hmm. was what. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, then just the cream cheese. We're gonna let that melt up, and then we have some bacon to put on top after we put it in the bowl. Yeah, I and mean, look at this. This looks that's so a, good. It's all cheesy, so it's got a lot of cheese in it. Yeah. But still, when you buy the reduced fat, uh, the fat-free, you your calories are just yeah. And if you had this Boy, with a salad or something, you don't you, you, yeah. know, you don't have to have a Stephanie size portion. You can I would have an probably Earth like a hard portion. Chicago roll with this. Oh, that would be so farm butter. good. I stayed on my uncle's farm when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. the butter there was a lot oh, different than I what you imagine. buy in the store. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to try a little uh -huh. bit? Uh And of course, I'm we're speed cooking, so you know yeah, what? Let it cook. You want let it, the let it hang out Mary. That is thick. Oh my gosh. They yes. got a picture to see how thick that is? Aha. Uh -huh. That just smells. Oh, here, put some. Oh, yeah. Get a little flavor here. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Oh gosh, that's good. Yeah. You know, I like the I like the hash brown consistency. Yeah, is that good? And so easy. Like I said, mm -hmm. you don't have to peel potatoes. You don't have to bake or, yeah, or this boil. Is, uh, it's so super simple. This is definitely an entree. Little salad with that. Yeah, you got it. Bread. So it's called cheesy hash brown potato soup, and we'll send it to you no cost. Uh, email is the best way. Mm -hmm. But if you write to us, that's good. Send us an envelope with a stamp on it and your address on it. We'll get it right back to you. Cheesy hash brown potato soup. Something you really need for the fall and the winter. Mm -hmm. Okay, stay with me. Linda Gilden is back, but if you didn't meet her the first time, uh, you're going to have a treat today to meet her. Great author, and all. we're going to talk about her newest book. So stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Linda, welcome back. Thank you. How long has it been? Do you know? Probably about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Is this your first book since I saw you? Actually, it's not. I think it's my third since we were oh, together. Oh, my word. I had one called Call to Write. I just felt like 
I wanted to put my love of writing down and maybe help somebody else get started on that mm -hmm. path. So I did one called Call to Write and then another personality book called Why You Do What You Do. And um, Did that take one. into account the temperaments? Yes. Why you do what you do? Yes. That would be a valuable book. Um, all right, this one is words to live by and one word per week. One word per week. And we had so much fun introducing this book. Mm -hmm. When we launched it, we came in with an idea to just make it fun. And I actually brought you a couple of fortune cookies. And okay, if you, that looks like a Chinese takeout. It's like a take Chinese out. takeout. Mm -hmm. And your fortune cookie will have your word for the week. Oh, I got some for the guys here. Yes, yes. And the girls. And the girls. I think these are so much fun. We just thought it would be a fun way, since we were talking about words, to um, get everybody else excited about, mm -hmm. oh, what, what could be my word? Even though yeah. they're written to be read e one each week, there's no particular order. How oh, cute. Dance. Dance. I oh, noticed I love that that's, word. That's one of the words in the book, and I was going to ask you about that. That's what a fun neat. word. Yeah. Dancing is, you know, that word may seem kind of interesting to include in a devotion book for some people, mm -hmm. but honestly, in, in our world today, people need to dance. They need to <laughs> celebrate. They need to have fun, and, and I have young grandchildren, and they're always about dancing, so we dance a lot at our house, but, um, you know, you just don't always think about dancing unless somebody reminds you. Yeah, and in the scripture, it was a joyful. Absolutely. It was a joyful thing. Right. Um, yeah, there were a couple words in there I was surprised, and I was going to bring that up. But let me let me talk a little bit about what all you do. Um, are you one of the leaders in that class? I am. I'm on the staff of class seminars. Did Florence Littire start that? She did. Yeah, she okay. did. And it's been over 30 years ago when, mm -hmm. since she started it. And it's still going strong, training speakers and writers around the country. Female, right? Or are no, 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 not just both. female. We have more and more men. When we first started, it seems like there were more women than men. But now we've got a lot of pastors that attend mm -hmm. and men who have written books and want to know how to promote those books by speaking. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I wanted to get to that. What's a person, personality trainer? Well, class. I've heard of a also, coach. But. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coach um, class also has a personality training workshop. And honestly, I think it's a fabulous idea because when I first went to class and they went through the curriculum and there was about 15 to 30 minutes just sandwiched in the speaker material about personalities. And my first thought was, why is that in here? Why do we need to know about that? But it was life changing for me because it helped me to understand my children better, my family, my friends. It made me understand that when I'm speaking, I'm speaking to different personality types. So I can't sit here and just make lists for my choleric listeners or have lots and lots of stories for my playful sanguine listeners. I've got to have something for everybody and use all the elements that intrigue them and engage them in what I'm saying. So. A lot of what she's talking about, and we've mentioned it on this program, are the four different temperaments yes. that people have named, and they go back to the time of Christ or before. Actually, Hippocrates was the first one to use these. And they mm -hmm. felt that they flowed from some kind of fluids the in the fluids. body, which is... But actually, they've kind of narrowed down to four different personality types, and they still recognize them today. They do. After all these years. There's the choleric, there's the sanguine, there's the... Um, melancholy. Melancholy. And, and the phlegmatic. The phlegmatic. Um, I studied those. Uh, I taught Tim LaHaye's book right. a couple times. And it's very valuable information to have. Because yes. when you have a little baby born, it's born with one of those personalities very dominant. And the Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. So when you understand what kind of a child you have or what your husband is like or your wife, um, it's going to make life a lot better. Well, you can understand them better, but you know, probably the most valuable part of that for me was understanding that I'm extremely melancholy, which means, number one, I'm not all that much of a party animal. I have a little bit of a perfectionist bent that I tend to impose on others. 
And when I took that first personality, that little 15 or 30 minutes, it just freed me to be who God made me to be. I didn't have to try to be the party animal because mm -hmm. God didn't make me that way. He made me to be the melancholy. And it also freed me to look at my children and say, you don't have to be perfect. I, you know, even though I wanted them to be, just do this and do that and just be perfect, it freed me to say, you don't have to do that. Yeah, and we've offered personality books on this program. Uh, and everybody's a bit of a combination. Right, There's, you can be. I've heard it put this way. The melancholy thinks it, mm -hmm. the choleric produces it, mm -hmm. the sanguine sells it, the phlegmatic enjoys it. That's a very good... And uh, they, that gives you a little bit of... Now, okay, so when you understand that, how does the personality training fit in? Of course, a lot of people don't even know what right. they are. Right, right. It's just a more... The personality training is three days, and it's a more in-depth study of each personality and how they relate to other the other personality, which often you think, well, I'm having trouble getting along with him or her because their personality is not something that I can get along with, when the reality is it may be that your personality and his or her personality just have a hard time getting along, and it's a two-way street there. It takes two to really understand the relationship. I just wonder if that kind of understanding would maybe reduce the divorce rate. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's a very interesting subject and I think quite solid. Yes. Um, yes. So now I think, I think it would be fun to go through the personality training. It is fun. I it's know a lot it's of surfacy, fun. but. Yes, it's a lot of fun. And it, but the main thing to me is that down under that fun, it's so practical. And it's just so freeing because it allows you to become who God made you to be. Plus, it allows you to let everyone else do the same uh, without being judgmental. Um, and it just makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. I understood my children better, why they were reacting to the way I asked them to do things. Maybe I should ask in a different way mm -hmm. and not be so um, per such a perfectionist <laughs> about the way I ask. Yeah, and the melancholies, are, they have highs and lows, don't they? Yes, yes. Poor John, that's her husband. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is your newest book. This is. 52 words Ordinary to... Words That Lead to an Extraordinary Life. And there's one per week. And when I went through this, I thought, boy, you ring a lot out of one word. I mean, there's <laughs> several pages for each right. word. Where did this idea come from? Actually, my co-author, and she's also was my neighbor uh, for many years, we just enjoyed being together and talking. And she, she actually went to a class, and they gave her a little paper with, I think, 15 or 17 words on it that were keywords for that class. And she, when she was telling me about it, she said, you know, that would be a great way to write a devotional book with 52 words every for for the year and just concentrate on one a week. So from her little piece of paper sprang the idea for this entire book. So what was the criteria when you chose a word? Because what I noticed, they're not, they're not all biblical words. They're not no. all holy words. They're no. not all church words. Uh, they aren't, but they are all verbs, words of action, something that you can do. And we're hoping that by starting with the action verbs that we will be able to actually encourage you to apply that word to your life, that you can go out and mm -hmm. do something, not just ponder it or not just think, well, I read about that word. So we purposely started with action words, the verbs. And we made a long list and then we narrowed it down to 52 that we thought were our favorites and that would most of all maybe be life changing for some people. Yeah, and they are things that are going to help your spirit. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. To grow. But um, like I said, they're, they're not what we think of as church words necessarily. Right. Some of them are. Um, what, what did you learn by exploring just one word? That seems like an enormous task to me. It was, but it was, it was fun because it was, um, it was kind of a journey of discovery for us. We, we knew all these words. They're not uncommon words. So uh, it, it challenged us to look deeper into that word. And I think we learned that words themselves are multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different uh, meanings for words if we just look for that meaning. And by looking at the same word for five days in a row, 
we have really challenged ourselves to look at that word differently as well as our readers. Uh, just thumbing through here, you have uh, focus is one word. Mm -hmm. Thank, exercise. Uh, I know you have honor uh, and forgiveness and mm -hmm. uh, respect, laugh. Yes. We're, the world could use some more laughter, I think. Absolutely. And, you know, some of them kind of surprised us. Mm -hmm. One of the words that my co-author really wanted to get in there was barter. And I was like, barter? How are we going to ever come up with five days worth of bartering? Mm -hmm. But guess what? That was one of the first ones we finished. It just, once we started studying it and delving into it, um, and, and when you think about it, it's a real relational thing. You've got oh, yeah. people relating to other people and helping other people. And so we really were excited when we got through with that word because in the very beginning, I personally had thought, mm, I'm not so sure mm -hmm. that we're going to be able to do that one. But um, that ended up being one of the first ones and, and kind of surprised both of us, actually. We're talking about Linda's book, Words to Live By, and the, the website is on the screen. You can get this book through her website. And what do you say? Three or four pages are given to each word? Five, five pages. Five pages. So you can do Monday through Friday. Okay, tell me what you learned about the word honor. Honor. Well, there were so many areas we could come from. We need to honor our friends. Well, first of all, of course, we need to honor God. And we were able to use situations where we could explore whether or not we were honoring God. And, and we tried to pick out some specific situations for all of these words that maybe the ordinary or average reader wouldn't think about. Um, you've got the military connotation when it comes to honor. You've got honor, lots of references to honor in the Bible. So that was an easy one to find a verse for. But um, that was that was one that maybe was a little more difficult. Not so much that we that the word didn't have opportunities to um, explore it. It was it was just a lot to that one, and we had to be very selective on some of them. I, I was questioned once uh, about honor your father and mother, mm -hmm. and I saw a gentleman on TV not too long ago. I think on the Hour of Power, had written a book, and he said it says honor, doesn't say love. Mm -hmm. And that explained a lot to me because there are people who have grown up with total abuse from their parents. Yes. Some of the most heart-wrenching stories that you would ever. Mm -hmm. And when he divided love and honor, that, there's no way you can love those people without right. God doing it for you, basically. But honor... It's a little different. Mm -hmm. Honor is that you can honor them for giving you life, you right. know, for a few things like that. And I think it's interesting that in the in the Ten Commandments, you know, you love the Lord your God and all that. But um, when it came to the parents, that you honor them, and when you do, you receive great things from the Lord. And I just wonder sometimes we have viewers out there that have really asked the question. Uh, they've had so much to overcome because of a horrendous childhood. Well, and it's a great, for a parent, it's such a moment to cherish when your children honor you oh, in, in yeah. any certain way. I'll never forget when our son was in college and he had two opportunities for trips. One of them was in the United States and the other one was to go to France. And the situation in France was not really... Um, peaceful at that time. I'm not sure it has been ever since, but I remember so well our conversation because he looked at me and he said, Mom, you and Dad really think I don't, you really don't want me to go to France. She, he said, I'm not afraid to go. I think we'd be fine, but I'm not going because I'm going to honor you. Wow. And that meant so much to us because because of the honor factor to that. And you know, that word is goes a little bit along with the word respect and you kind of have to separate, the, they're different. But, and you have to kind of separate those two words. But honoring in a situation like that when your child can honor you is just such a blessing to a parent. And there's nothing like <clears throat> honoring someone. No. There's nothing. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea when we think of our friends and loved ones and all, if we can just come up with some creative way mm -hmm. uh, to honor them, that it uh, is such a blessing to them and to us as well. I really, truly believe that if you got this book and you and just had a good understanding of 52 words, it could really uh, 
really impact your life. Words are so important. I, I just wish I'd been more aware of that so much younger because sometimes we just shoot from the hip and once it's out there, you can't pull it back. That's right. And you know, when we're children, we chant to each other, sticks and stones will break our bones, <laughs> but words will never hurt us. Not that true. is so not true. And words can change a life. Words can make a day brighter. Mm -hmm. Words can save somebody from making some really bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And so words are so important. I had a teacher in college who said a few words to me that made me stop writing for 15 years. Because, but partly because of my melancholy personality. Mm -hmm. I took those words yeah, and internalized them much more than I should have. But for 15 years, I never wrote anymore. And then my husband really encouraged me to try it again. You're doing a lot of writing just because you like it and you're doing things for the church. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try again? Forget what she said. Yeah, we're, we're getting close to getting out of time. Do you have a favorite word in this book? One of my favorites, I can't, I, it's so hard for you to say what is one favorite uh -huh. word out of the 52, but I think one of my favorites has got to be celebrate. Life is a celebration. We have I so agree. much to be thankful for and to celebrate. And I mean, it may be a child losing a tooth. It may be the first um, apple on the tree that's ready to pick. It, they're, celebrate the little things. Sometimes people think, well, we, we don't need to have a celebration for yeah. that because they think big old party and you know, all that. That is not my thoughts when I think of celebrate. We need to celebrate each other, who we are and how God made us and what a blessing it is to have them around. So that's probably one of my favorites just because of that. I, I could join you on that. Once again, words to live by. I, I really truly believe that this book would enrich your life and expand your boundaries and your thought processes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Oh, be so careful, the words that come out of your mouth, because they can be a blessing, they can curse, they can right. encourage, they can discourage, and it's something that really needs to be brought to our attention. I thank you mm -hmm. uh, for bringing it uh, to our attention in this wonderful book, and hope that we've given you a whole lot to think about out there, friends, because this is something, I mean, you don't have to Go buy anything or special diet or anything. Just watch the words that come out of your mouth. It's going to make a big difference in your life and certainly uh, the lives that are around you. Think about it, please, and join me next time. Remembering there is no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. Homekeepers.